Welcome back to the channel for another sneaker news video. Today we're covering one of the most popular sneakers over the last couple of years, the Air Jordan 1 Low. We have a lot of amazing colorways to get into. We're gonna get into some of the best colorways, some of the worst colorways, but before we do, I actually got a really crazy, interesting package in the mail today from the people over at Mischief. If you guys don't know Mischief, you probably have heard of them. They were the company behind the Satan shoes and the Jesus shoes, the ones where you could actually walk on water holy water which was really cool they sent over this small box right here which I wanted to open up in today's video now although it's not a pair of shoes I still think it's really dope because uh, I'm really really into trading cards and that was like the hint I got I already have a trading card channel called sneaker talk TCG so I'm probably gonna showcase these in even more detail on that channel but allow me to open up this pack like look at this package <laughs> Okay, there we go. Boosted packs, mischief trading cards, first edition, 10 packs per box. What? How much cards are in a box, man? This looks cool. Look at this, guys. This is, this is really, really unique. Yeah, we're gonna quickly run through this box and then we're gonna get into the Air Jordan 1 low news. Oh my gosh, look, oh my gosh, they're flying out. Can I have sleeves? I have sleeves, but I don't know if they're gonna fit. Five cards per pack. Okay, I don't know if we can open all these in this one video, cause that's gonna be a lot of pack opening. So you know what? We're gonna open up five of these right here, and then we're gonna open up five on the uh, Sneaker Talk TCG channel. So check that out if you wanna see it all. But let's just, let's just check this out, man. Boosted packs. It looks like from what I've heard that they have like real life inspired like look I can see Obama right there very small very small print this is interesting man hundreds of cards there's over hundreds of cards in this set this is cool fraud fun X marks the spot this looks cool all right let's do it our very first uh, mischief trading card booster pack opening on the channel I want to open this but I don't know how to open it without damaging it I want to like cut it open let me see these are like really really packed in here like real tight I'm actually kind of scared that I, I might damage the cards let me just do a little cut here I don't know what the chase cards are from this from this set you know but here we go this is the fr first card or first little thing here boosted packs mischief mischief trading card game and it has a uh, a scan here for boosted pack exploits we have an IKEA family what <laughs> what the heck IKEA family card What's going on here? Manage your IKEA family account. So I guess we got an IKEA family account right here, uh, a card for IKEA. We got a Mischief University uh, student ID for Bob Bingo. Interesting, his date of birth is 42069. I like it, I like it. <laughs> oh man, wow. This is, this is interesting, man. This is really, really cool. What's this here? We got Big Ass Fans. Big Ass Fans, Jenny Warnick, VP Global Business Lines. It's like a random business card. Um, we have Sub Club Customer Appreciation Card for Lewis Duncan from 27 to 2725 Hilltop Street. We just doxed you. I'm very sorry. And what's on the back here? That's oh, it's like a coupon for some free subs. Okay. And then over here we have the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Fish and Game. Wow, I'm so I'm very confused right now. I'm, I'm very confused. Mischief is known for like making very uh, wild and creative kind of projects. And this is definitely one I didn't see coming. I mean, it makes sense given the year 2021 where uh, trading cards and you know, Pokemon cards, sports cards, all these card hobbies are really taking off in popularity. Oh my gosh, check this out. We got Mischief University, another card. Oh, we got Elon Musk kid. We got Elon Musk kid X A E A X to musk <laughs> with, with tattoos on his head. <laughs> I'm so confused. His date of birth is May 420. Uh, issue date was May 420. <laughs> what the heck, yo, we just pulled, we just pulled an Elon Musk kid. Uh, what else do we have in here? 2021 boating permit for Corey Reed. Like, I'm so confused. These are all like, I'm so confused. Theranos, we got like a random ID card for this girl which looked like it came from some like lanyard. We have a library card for Brooklyn's public library. Will this work in Brooklyn's public library? This is so weird, man. AAA, you know, CAA. Um, I'm just, 
I am beyond like, I'm beyond words right now. What the, what the heck is going on? I'm like half of these cards, I feel like they made. And then the other half of these cards could have been like legitimate, like things like they didn't make them. They're like straight from someone's uh, collection of, of cards of, you know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> it's so weird. Let's see this one over here. I really want to pull Barack Obama though. I want to see what the Barack Obama card looks like. So let's get into this next pack. Boosted packs. Oh, we got a mischief wholesale gold star member. We got, oh. I wonder if they have a McLovin. I really do wonder if they have a McLovin card. We have a uh, Regis Tevanti Hawaii driver's license, but it is the British flag or like UK flag over there, mischief donor. <laughs> what is, this is so weird. We got another Brooklyn library card. Okay, another common you could say. Oh, we got a Steve Jobs in loving memory of Steve Jobs. He was an anti-vaxxer. <laughs> That's at the very top from 1955 to 2011. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff on the back here too. Let me zoom in. I'm no longer by a side, but there's no need to weep. I've left sweet recollection. I'm hoping you would keep eternal joy and memories stay in our hearts forever. Strengthening our special <laughs> and loving memory of Steve Jobs. He was an anti-vaxxer. I love how that was like the subtitle they gave him. And then we have a, a mischief, like a Rexall pharmacy rewards card for a... Uh, from <laughs> So, this is really cool. Um, thank you, Mischa, for sending this over. Very collectible items, I want to say. They're really fun. So if you guys want to see me open the other other five, I'll leave the I'll leave my trading card channel linked down below. This is so weird to me. I've never seen trading cards like this before. I feel like I should sleep. You know what? Where's my Steve Jobs? We're going to uh, we're going to sleeve up our boy Steve Jobs right here. Even though he was an anti-vaxxer, we're gonna sleeve him up and use protection because Steve Jobs didn't believe in, in protection when it came to vaccines. I'm actually gonna be getting my second COVID shot very soon, so I'm hyped. This will be uh, sent out to PSA very, very soon. Wonder what it's gonna get graded. The, the cornering and the edges look really good. So even the centering looks fantastic. I don't know what this is. It looks like some sort of like weird card. Weird, weird card. A COVID-19 vaccina COVID vaccination record. Okay, so it's like the, COVID vaccine kind of thing, uh, what you call it, the passports. So here's a vaccination record where it shows you the first and second dose. Is this like a all like themed packs? Oh, we got the Jesus shoes. Let's go. Let's go. We got the Jesus shoes right there. Love to see it. And in fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea, Matthew 14, 25. Dope. All right, we're going to sleeve up our boy uh, Jesus shoes right here. I love that. That's actually so dope. One more pack left because I know this card opening is taking up quite a chunk of the sneaker news time here. And then maybe we can pull the Barack Obama card. Maybe it's like his birth certificate or something like that. Or I don't know, maybe it's like a fake ID for Barack Obama. But yeah, all these cards are like the same same size as like an actual credit card or business card. That's not like a trading card size. So we got another Costco mischief wholesale card right here. Oh, we got another ID for uh, Reggie Tavanti right here. Okay, okay. Oh, we got Chris Kempzinski from McDonald's. We got his ID card right here as well. So now I can obviously walk into any McDonald's and flash this and they give me everything I want for free. Oh, what the heck is this? Who is he? Bruh. Who is this a young man? What the heck? It literally is like from one of those walk in at the mall photo shoot <laughs> things. Oh, why do we have this? Hey, why do we have him? Who is he? We have a Subway Sub Club appreciation card. Another one of these next pack. And then we're gonna get into some sneaker news for the Air Jordan 1 Low. And I gotta say, there's quite a few awesome uh, colorways coming out very, very soon. Like, this is gonna be a big year again for the Jordan 1 Low. We got the Shattered Backboards, we got the Travis Scott's Fragments, we got the anime ones. All right, here we go, Boosted Packs. This is the front right here. We got a Boating Permit here for Corey Reed. Once again, this is probably one of the more common ones to get. The Fool, not sure what he is uh, doing, but he's just fooling around right here. Oh, that's cool. This one has like a nice texture to it. We have another COVID vaccination record record card. And then we have a another Subway card. Who is this? Alibaba Group Jack Ma. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, uh, thank you, Mischief, for sending this over. If there's a link that can provide more information about this trading card game, I'll leave a link down below. Thanks again, Mischief, for sending these over. With that said, let's get to some Air Jordan 1 Low news. So before we get into a bunch of the upcoming Air Jordan 1 Low releases, there were a couple that were recently released, so let's just quickly dive into those and let you guys know what you might have missed. A couple of days ago on June 24th, we had the Air Jordan 1 Low OG Neutral Gray release. This is probably going to be one of the best colorways
giveaways of the year without a doubt. The resale prices on these aren't too high right now, which is really good to see. Another Jordan 1 Low that released on June 23rd are the Air Jordan 1 Low Lime Lights. This is like a lime green pair. I believe it is woman's exclusive and released for 100 US dollars. This pink and gum woman's Air Jordan 1 Low also released last week for a retail price of 90 US dollars. These look really clean. And another Air Jordan 1 Low, which is perfect for the summer because of its triple white colorway, are the Air Jordan 1 Low Breathe, which released exclusively for a woman. Not too crazy about these upcoming releases. Let's get into it and let's start off with a banger. But before we do, I want to let you guys know that we don't have all the confirmed information for every single release along with all the prices, but I can give you guys some estimated release prices and release dates. All this is subject to change, of course, because of the, how the world is still. But when it comes to Jordan 1 Lows, typically not all of them have a hard release date. They just let you know like a week before they come out or they're just suddenly in the store shelves. However, this first pair we're going to talk about is obviously going to be one of the most hyped releases of the year and not just for Air Jordan 1 Lows. We're talking about the Air Jordan 1 Low Travis Scott X Fragment. These shoes right here are going to be like all over the internet over the next couple of weeks throughout the summer. These are gonna be one of the best sneakers in my opinion, and I actually like these more than the original Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low. Really, really looks awesome. It really reminds me of that hype, that cool blue color from the fragments that you don't really see very often on Jordan 1s. And then you're mixing that with Travis Scott's aesthetic on this shoe with the reverse swoosh, and the materials look really nice. I like the cream or sail accents for the swoosh and the midsole. Overall, this sneaker looks amazing and it's definitely gonna be one of the uh, one of the top 10 sneakers of the year at least for a lot of people at least I think the confirmed release date we have these is August 13th and right now we don't have a retail price but let's be honest it doesn't matter what these are gonna retail for because they're gonna sell out and I, I predict I predict resale is gonna be at least a thousand dollars when they release this is gonna be a high high profile release so get ready set your alarms do what you gotta do to cop these shoes because these are gonna be a must have for so many people. Next up are a pair of Jordan 1 Lows that are clearly inspired by one of the most hyped ones from last year, the Dior Jordan 1 Low. This pair is the Wolf Gray Air Jordan 1 Low and the similarities are uncanny. It's super, super obvious what they were going for with this color blocking, with this colorway. And then to put it all together, they have that icy blue outsole. This is something we've seen a lot of brands do all the time. They'll always make a knockoff or poor man's version so be it of a high profile release which is pretty much unobtainable to the average sneakerhead but by releasing these they're pretty much guaranteed to have a sneaker that will sell out and will make a lot of sneakerheads happy because they have something that is really really close to the original that is probably out of the price range now now we don't have a worldwide release date for these yet but we do have a release date for Asia which is July 17th and the pricing we don't really have that confirmed yet either but it's likely to be a hundred US dollars plus tax now one thing they're also doing with this particular Jordan 1 low and they're starting to implement it on other Air Jordan 1 lows that are not the OGs, is they're debossing or embossing the logo of the Wings logo onto the back heel of the shoe. Typically, it's been like a stitched in Wings logo they would do, and sometimes it comes off looking cheap and looking ugly, but by debossing it, it's gonna allow for more consistency in each pair, pair to pair. And the overall look of the shoe is closer to the Air Jordan 1 Low OG, which has always had it like debossed into the very top of the booty on the heel. Next up is another colorway which confuses me, not because it's a weird colorway, just because of the name. These are the Team Red Air Jordan 1 Low, and they use that, you know, beautiful, beautiful kind of Chicago color blocking with white palettes with hits of white and then that main color of team red in my opinion this team red definitely looks more like a like a burgundy like a maroon we don't yet have a release date for the silhouette but it's gonna be a late summer release most likely and these also have that debossed Air Jordan wings logo on the back and the retail price that we know of is either 90 to 100 US dollars it seems like some pairs are bumping up by ten dollars to a hundred US so it just depends on the pair uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Next up are a yellow pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows, which I really, really like for summer in particular. These have been nicknamed like the Yellow Mustard, and uh, they're gonna retail for 100 US dollars. We don't yet have a confirmed release date for these, but they look really, really clean, and definitely something I feel like a lot of people will, will wear. I don't think the resale value for this pair is gonna be too, too high, because it's not really a colorway. I see a lot of people trying to like collect. This is definitely a sneaker that 
you'll see on the shelves, they'll catch your eye and you'll, you'll probably cop them if you're in the mood for some, some yellow white Air Jordan ones. There isn't really too many uh, yellow Air Jordan one low, so these will definitely stand out. Continuing with the UNC trend, we've seen Nike, AKA Jordan brand, put out a ton of, they recently released like the UNC Dunks. Now they're gonna be releasing a UNC Jordan one low. Now the color of the UNC, a university blue, isn't as like sky blue as light as we're typically used to seeing compared to something like an Air Jordan 1 High uh, OG or the Off Whites or the Dunks that just released. This has more of like an aqua, aqua blue, less of a UNC blue. But regardless, I still think they're a really good colorway. I feel like this will be a colorway that also sells out this summer. Now there isn't a specific release date, but the retail price is expected to be 90 to 100 US dollars. Next up, we have a trash pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows, but they're not actually a trash colorway. They're just made out of trash or recycled materials. We've seen this before with the Air Jordan 1 High and the Air Jordan 1 Mid most recently. This time we have the Crater Air Jordan 1 Low, which is created with mostly a recycled upper and sustainably conscious materials, which is really nice for those people who are really trying to look out for the environment, who still love sneakers and love buying lots of them. So a nice option that's a little bit more environmentally friendly. The colorway is really clean for daily use, so you're gonna get a lot of use out of these if you do end up buying them. Now we don't have a price or release date for these shoes, but we'll let you guys know as soon as they do. Over on Instagram, it is at SneakerTalkCA. Next up are a pair of Jordan 1 Lows, which I love, but I really hope they're release these in extended men's sizing. This is going to be a woman's exclusive, the Air Jordan 1 Low Corduroy. I love when sneakers use corduroy on them. It's definitely a unique material that you don't see very often. And I think this colorway looks amazing. It's super basic, it's super neutral. It's like this white and this beige, not beige, it's like a beige tan, light brown, like a teddy bear kind of color. And it looks so, so good. And uh, yeah, I'm just really hoping they release these in extended men's sizing. Cause right now this is a woman's exclusive and we don't know if they're gonna run into the run into the larger, larger size. Retail for the corduroy ones are expected to be 90 US dollars. The next two releases are dedicated to my weebs, my anime lovers, my waifu aficionados. We have the Mighty Swooshes, or Mighty Swooshers. Is it my, yeah, Mighty Swooshes Air Jordan 1 Lows. These are sick. So they're gonna be releasing these in two colorways. The very first one that we heard of was this pink one right here on screen. And I wasn't too crazy about these, to be honest with you. I'm not really a big fan of the way the color blocking is with the eyelets being a weird shade of pink. And then the swoosh is like a different shade. And then the upper is just, it's multiple shades of pink, not really feeling them. But the one thing for me that was really cool for this release is the, the outsole. The outsole is an icy translucent outsole. So you can see the print uh, behind it. And it's just like manga print with massive, uh, massive eyeballs staring at you. It's really, really cool. These shoes are definitely going to be uh, definitely a fan favorite for Jordan 1 Lowe's this year. Probably one of the more hyped ones that isn't like a collaboration, so to speak, like it is with the Travis Scott ones and Fragments. These are definitely gonna be a sought after pair of shoes with a lot of anime lovers and manga lovers worldwide. It doesn't carry a big, you know, collaboration name like Fragment or Travis Scott on them, but the concept of them is kind of cool. You know, it's, it's really cool. I remember like back when I was younger, uh, it used to be like deemed kind of weird and very nerdy if you liked anime and manga. Now it's really mainstream. So you could kind of say like Nike's kind of being a little culture vulture, a little bit digging into the anime randomly without even collaborating with like an artist. Like this would be really cool if they collaborated with like an artist in my opinion, like a manga artist or an anime artist, but it's just like a random, random design. So unless we get some more storyline, I want to be more excited about this. Like I want to know about the storytelling behind the shoe, not just a, hey, anime Jordan 1 low, slap on a thing and call it a day. I want to see these flushed out a bit more. Next up is the other colorway from the Mighty Swooshes pack. This is the blue colorway. And these look way, way nicer in my opinion. And not just because we got better images for this video, but just the colorway looks really, really good. I like the way they use the different shades of blue on this shoe. It looks a lot less appalling or, you know, it looks way cleaner in my opinion compared to the pink ones that have the eyelets really, really stand out. These are super, super wearable especially too, because uh, it's this blue. I don't really wear too much pink, so this blue shoe I'm more likely to wear. And these are very similar to the pink pair I just showed you with that translucent outsole with the manga design. However, this time around, they have the character's eyes being male. So if you actually look closely on the pink pair, it's a woman 
on the manga, you can see her eyelashes like really pop out and stuff. This pair is, I think, like the boy version and they have a girl version. So they might release these exclusively for men and then the pink pair might be exclusively for women, but we have yet to find out. But yeah, the quality on these looks really, really good just based off of the images alone. And we don't yet have a specific release date or release price, but I'm expecting these to at least be a premium release. So at least 130 US dollars, I think. Next up are a pair that I think are just so trash and Nike should cancel this pair. Like, please, please do not release these. These are so ugly. These are the Sneakers Day Air Jordan 1 Low. These sneakers honestly look like, to me, a, a, like a weird fake custom I would see at the fake marketplaces in the Philippines, like in Green Hills or Cardamar. Like I would see this laying on the floor and be like, I would not even be paid to wear these. That's how ugly I think these Air Jordan 1 Lows are. Like the cheetah print, the random, like kind of the translucent outsole, the, everything about the shoe is just, ugh. So if you really like these shoes and you're not, and you're maybe gonna wear them like ironically, or if maybe you're in a LMF the expected release date is August 8 and these are going to be an EU exclusive. So for all my Europeans out there, uh, you probably won't really need any luck to buy these. I wonder if these are going to have resale though. That would be interesting. Next up, we have another pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows in a yellow colorway. However, this time they have more yellow on it. This is like a yellow and university gold mixture compared to the white and yellow pair I saw earlier, which I do like more. Uh, not too crazy about this pair. It was rumored that these were going to be a women's or GS exclusive, and now it's confirmed they're also going to be releasing in men's sizing as well. And this is going to be an easy pass for me. Retail price is 90 or 100 US dollars, more likely 90 US dollars. And uh, we don't have a specific release date for this pair, but probably expect it in the summer because this is definitely a summer kind of shoe. Next up are a really clean pair of Air Jordan 1 Lows, which are likely to be a woman's exclusive as well based off the color palette that they use. I really like them. These are really clean. This is a white tan gum pair and it has like that light gum sole, not super, super dark. These look really clean. I think these would be great in the summer months and uh, I could see a lot of girls wearing these. This is definitely like a, a sneakerhead woman's shoe. Like I don't really think a lot of guys could pull these off in my opinion. This is a really, really cool colorway though. Like not something uh, we see super, super often. Retail price for these is gonna be 100 US dollars and the expected release date is summer 2021. Specific date, we don't know, but just stay tuned and you'll find out eventually. Next up, we have the Brushstroke 2.0 Air Jordan 1 Low. They did this on the low top earlier this year in like a white and then a black colorway. Those look way better than these in my opinion. I like what they did. Uh, with the like the kind of colorway, this like black with uh, white cream sail-ish kind of color, but the paint splatters, like all this random paint splatter for me, really turns me off from the shoe. But yeah, it's still a unique looking concept. You don't really see Nike mess around with the overall swoosh uh, too, too often. Now there's no specific release date or release price for this shoe, but we are seeing them resell currently on the sneaker marketplaces for between 130 to 155 US dollars. Last but not least, we have the Air Jordan one low shattered backboards. This is a shoe a lot of people are looking forward to releasing. A lot of people have been anticipating this shoe for quite some time. We did see the low top shattered backboards in the past that are on screen right now, but this pair, let's be honest, this pair is nicer. It has that like kind of Chicago color blocking, but it's in that orange colorway and it has that Nike Air on the tongue. And it's like everything a lot of people have been looking forward to from a shattered backboard Jordan 1 low. Now these will be releasing on August 26 for 130 US dollars which is the standard price for the new low top Air Jordan 1 low OGs. And then uh, what we don't know right now is the quality. How will these stack up compared to the highs? I've seen the Jordan 1 low in the OG form and the quality has been really nice on the other pairs, but you want these to be as high quality as like the highs, for example, because that is one thing that is synonymous with the Shatter Backboard. Really great quality leather. So I'm hoping that Jordan brand doesn't let us down on these. I hope the quality is amazing. You already know I'm gonna try and buy these early to review them for you guys on the channel. And uh, yeah, this is definitely gonna be one of the fan favorite Jordan 1 lows in this entire video. From what I've seen though, the picks look promising for the leather material, but of course you can't really judge the leather based off the photos alone. You can only kind of guess based off of previous experience, but uh, it does look really promising. So with that said, if you made it to the end of the video, comment down below which Air Jordan 1 lows you are looking forward to the most. I will catch you guys in the next sneaker news video. And uh, yeah, lots of reviews on the way for a lot of these shoes you guys saw today. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.